What is your God's name? Part 36. I'm Professor Hannes Redlingeis of the First Assembly of Yafashua in South Africa, Victoria Montana, also international. Should you require any of the books which I've written, especially the book What is Your God's Name, uh, which is a I5, uh, A5 A5 book, quite thick, nearly 500 pages. Or need any information, just contact us at my WhatsApp number 0722367124. Go to my website https double point hyphen yaffa yahvah.co.za. This is the first time that you will participate in the study. You are very, very welcome. I'd urge you to go to part one because you have already missed quite a bit of information. Uh, it's very important to subscribe to the channel in order to receive the different notifications of the other studies that we are currently busy with. Please share this link with your friends and family and make sure that you have a 1611, at least a 1611 King James Bible pen and paper ready. It's very important to note that we do not associate ourselves with the foreign groups, churches or people, any messianic groups, the Israel religion groups, the Hebrew Root Movement, the Sacred Name Movement, the Yah Movement, the Jehovah Witnesses or the Seventh-day Adventist Churches or any other church denomination or organization in the world. We are not a church, we are a Bible study group and we are functioning throughout the world. We mainly using the ancient or the original Hebrew Sacred Name Bible, the Restoration, of the original Sacred Name Bible, the one that was translated by Dr. Joseph Brian Rotterdam in 1860, where he took the names God, Lord, Jesus, Jehovah, he changed it to the original Hebrew names, where the name Jesus is originally Yafashua, the name God was originally Elohim Hashim, the name God, Lord was Yafa. The name of the Holy Spirit was originally the Ruach of Kodesh. We refer to ourselves as Yafist, according to 1 Peter 4 verse 16, in the restoration of the original sacred name Bible. May this study be a blessing unto you in the wonderful name of Yafashua. We're going to continue where we left off last week. And again, I want to say it's important to always wash my hands. Uh, because if it does this, it means brackets, so I'm putting something in to make it more understandable. The name far above every other name. Oh, you re I can remember when I, was a when I was in church, when I was a youngster, when the pastor used to say that we worship the name above every other name. I always thought it was the name Jesus not knowing that the letter J never existed in the ancient Hebrew times, nor 2,000 years ago when Yahushua was walking the earth. It only came to in existence in 1524, in the 16th century, the letter J, and then only could they create the name Jesus. According to the following scriptures, we will find that the son of Yafa of Elohim, that's God, of course, you know that, received a name above every other name in heaven and on earth. Wherefore also Yafa of Elohim uplifted him that Yafa, Shua, far on high, and favored him with a name above every other. He what? He gave him a name above every other name in heaven. If you go and read Hebrew 1, when Yahushua was glorified or uplifted, exalted, he said, and he received a name above all the other angels. And he was called a Elohim, a God, and he says to the angels, and you must worship him. Him with a name above every other name, order that the, uh, the moment the name of Yahushua, every name shall bow of him, being in heaven, and on the earth and under the earth, according to Philippians 2 verse 9 and 10. Verse 9, Therefore Yahweh our Elohim also hath highly exalted him. He did what? He exalted him. What does it mean exalted? He lifted him up. After he, 
after he, he exalted him from angel to son of Jaffa, and Jaffa and given him a name which is above every other name. Have you have you listened to what I just said? Have you listened to what Philippians 2 verse 9 says? Therefore Jaffa our Elim, the Father, also had highly exalted him. That's Jaffa Shua. And gave him a name which is above every, and I put in brackets, other name. That at the name, that at the name of Yeshua or Yahushua, every knee shall bow of everything in heaven and things on earth and things under the earth. Was that the name Jesus? Or well, that's how we were taught. Not knowing, not knowing that the Roman Catholic Church in the 2nd century uh, actually out-translated the revelation name. When the angel said to Miriam, Mary, which is Mary, which is a Greek name, a name, Miriam, Hebrew name, you will bear a son, you must call his name Yafashua, Matthew 1.23, Emmanuel, if it's translated El, Yafa, El, our Father with us, Emmanuel, with us. He received his Father's name, a name above every other name. And we always thought it was the name Jesus. If we can understand the above scripture, we, we will know how Yafa, Shua, the son of Yafa, was exalted. Later in the study, we will focus on the Godhead of Yafa, Shua, the holiness and then we will thoroughly discuss the subject in detail. I wonder if you have ever realized that whenever we use the name Yafashua or Yafa in our prayers, that we are actually using a name which is exalted above every other name. It's exalted above the name Jesus. Why? Because the name Jesus is a Babylonian name. Jesus is, you, is the sun god. The name Jesus is linked to Isis, I-S-I-S, -I -S, which actually is the sun god, Ra, Egyptian time, Zeus in the Greek time. Uh, he became Isis in the Roman time. He became Jesus in the Protestant time. But Yahweh has provided that we in this 21st century today, May glorify him in his son's name. Hallelujah. Yafa Shua. I can call him Yahshua, not Yeshua. Yahshua. But you know what? I prefer the full name. Yafa, the father's name. Shua. S H U A means Redeemer and Savior. I wonder if you have ever realized that whenever you use the name of Yahshua or even Yafa Shua in your prayer, that we are actually using the name which is exalted above every other name in heaven and on earth according to the restoration of the original sacred name Bible, the Rotten Arm Version. One that is banned in the world. I have a couple of these Bibles available. You can't find it, not even in one bookshop in the world. Every time you use the name Yafashua or Yashua without realizing, realizing it, we are also addressing the Father Yafa of Elohim's name. When I say Yafa Shua, I say Yafa is the Father. Because the angel said to Miriam, he was called him Yafa Shua, Emmanuel. Emmanuel means El or Yafa, our Elohim, with us. As the study continues, we shall become con converted, uh, uh, we shall become evident that the son and his father consequently have the very same names that you must know by this time. Most of the time when I pray, then I refer to name, use the name Yafashua. I pray to Father Yafa in the name of Yafashua. It remains everybody's right to use whatever names he or she prefers. As long as you use the original Hebrew sacred names and not any Roman Catholic creations of substitutions like Jesus, God, Lord, and whatever. Yahweh. 
My Bible declares, James 4 verse 3, You ask and receive not, because you ask Amish, that you may consume it upon your lust. You ask and you receive not. Why? Because you're using other names. But the real name. In the beginning of the study, I told you that every personal name gives identity to the name's bearer. When the angel told Miriam that she should bring forth a son, and she was called his name Yahfashua, According to the restoration of the original sacred name Bible, the restoration by Matthew 1 21, this name was meant to save the world from their sins, even in this 21st century. The name would become the remedy for the sick, the answer to the disgruntled marriages, the solution for financial problems, and the direction for governments of this world. Hallelujah. Why? Because his name, the name Yafashua, which will become the best known name of all ages. Today in 2024, through Roman Catholic Bible translations, we realize that the pagan names of Isis, Jesus, was created to redirect the attention of the world from the personality of the name Yafashua. To that of an idol sun god. When we study the following scripture, we will realize why Father Yafa Al Elohim had declared his son should have a name. We shall understand why he decided that his son should have a name which is different to any other name in the world. There's a reason for that. How many times in my life have I heard of people who named after the name Jesus? Jesus the Santos, the Portuguese like the name Jesus. In my whole life of 72 years, I never heard of any person who was named Yeshua or Yafashua, except the son of Yafa, our Elohim. Hallelujah. The son would receive a name above every other name in heaven and in earth and under the world under the waters in the world ephesians 1 21 it says far above all principalities and powers and might and dominion and every name that is a name not only in this world but also in that which is to come so the name yafashua is not just only relevant in this world where we're living in today, in the world afterwards. Do you think the angels and the seraphs, the 24 elders and the four holy beasts, will call the sun who will open the seven seals, they will call him Jesus in heaven? A Greek name? Will they speak Greek? But when I read my Bible in Acts, when Apostle Paul, when he was still Saul, uh, who is in the process of arresting uh, the disciples and apostles of Yafashua, on the Damascus road, the voice said, and Yafashua spoke out of heaven, to Saul in a Hebrew voice. Go read your 16 King James Bible. You what? He spoke to him in a Hebrew voice. So the angels in heaven understand Hebrew. Well, otherwise, you're for sure, wouldn't have spoke Hebrew to him. Why haven't he spoke Greek to him? Because Saul was a citizen of the Romans and he was a, and he was a citizen of Israel. According to the, he had, he had citizenship of both countries. According to the scripture, Yahushua has a name that is exalted above every other name in heaven and on earth. Not just in our time, in this 21st century, but also in the future, in time to come. Do all in his name. Hallelujah. 
His name. Every time in the New Testament when the disciples of Yahweh prayed, they prayed in the original sacred name. They never called upon a name which is called Jesus or even Isis. Because in the time of the apostles, Isis was known as a sun idol god, a sun god idol. Isis. And then when the translation of the four Gospels, when they wrote the translation, the Roman Catholic Church between 100 and 127 AY changed the name Yafashua to Isis. And the Roman Catholic Bibles for the next 1500 years, when referring to Yafashua, they were referred to him as Isis. Who's Isis? I don't hear. The sun god. In the 16th century, they changed Isis to Jesus when they created in 1524. They created the letter J and they called him Jesus, which is the same Isis, which they worship a pagan god for a thousand five hundred years. You must excuse me, but I cannot put this in a much lighter way. To me, it was the biggest shock of my life. That's why I resisted this gospel, this revelation gospel for nearly four months. It wasn't my wife, Pastor Rika, who continues with the Bible, the Restoration Bible, which we got as a present from... Uh, uh, Another brother of ours, um, Thais, Uncle Thais, I would never have, I didn't want to know nothing. I couldn't believe that after 60 years of my life, that I was totally worshipping a sun god. It was unacceptable to me, until the Ruach HaKodesh revealed his the word of Yaffa, the revelation word unto me. Every time in the New Testament when the disciples of Yahweh prayed, they prayed in the original sacred names and not in any ancient pagan gods' names. Every time that they, that they and us now in the 24th century, when we pray in the revelation names, the demon powers of Satan suffer because of the power of in the name of Yahweh, hallelujah. When you call upon the name of Yahweh, all demons will flee. You want to cast out demons? You want to heal sick? Do it in the name of Yahweh. You, Mark 16, 16. I just think of a scripture. Yahweh instructs the disciples. Go and cast out demons. Lay your hands upon the sick in my name. The name, above every other name, the name Yahweh. These disciples of Yahweh understood the secret and power according to the following scripture. Now you must listen. Now you must tie your seatbelt. Colossians 3 verse 17. Galatians 3 verse 17. Uh, sorry, Galatians 3 verse 1. And whatever, whatsoever ye be doing in word or in work, all things do it in the name of Yahweh. Giving thanks unto Yahweh the Father. Through him, Yafashua, hallelujah. Whatever you do in work and in word, do it in the name of Yafashua, the son of Yafa Al Elohim. The Bible also says when you whatever you pray, you pray unto the Father in the name of the Son. Yafashua. Why? Because my Bible says, all power has been given unto the Son. 
and only after the battle of Imageddon then you will have the white throne judgment and that's where all evil forces will be cast into the lake of brimstone and fire and then only will the son again resubmit himself to the father and he will hand back the power but the only difference is now Yahushua will have his own bride. Hallelujah. King David prophesies that the Messiah Yahushua would come in his father's name. Did you know that? King David prophesied it. We're going to look at a couple of scriptures. King David's pro you know that King David was a prophet? Yes. King David prophesied that the Messiah, Yahushua, would come in his father's name, Yapha, according to Psalms 118 verse 26, and he did as recorded in the four Gospels. See how the four Gospels is going to uh, uh, guarantee the promises of Psalms 118 verse 26 verse 26 Psalms 118 118 26 Blessed be he who is he? Yeah for sure that cometh in the name of Yapha his father now in the King James it will say in the name of God God is not the name Ask a Buddhist, what is his God's name? He won't say God, he will say Buddha. Ask a Hindu, what is his God's name? And they got more than 3,000 gods. Let's talk about Vishu. He won't say God, he will say Vishu. Ask a Muslim, what is his God's name? He won't say God. He will say Allah, but ask a Protestant Christian or a Catholic, what is your God's name? And they will say God, because it's translated there in Psalms 118.26 as God. It's not God. Thousands of times, 6,923 times in the Old Testament, when referring to the name Yaffa, it is written in the 1611 King James and the other translations as God or Lord. God. God means object of worship. In this studio, there's different lights there. Now I can look at that light, I can say, Hi, 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 he's my God. He's my God. But the light has a name. The name is Electrolux. So it's, the name of the light is not light or God. God means object of worship. It's a yellow stand with a light on it. But it's Electrolux product. So what's the God's name? Electrolux. How easy is that? What's your God's name? God or Lord. Lord comes from the Greek word Kyrios or Theos which the Catholics use when they translated the four Gospels in the second century and they took the name Yaffa away. Yod in Hebrew, Yod, Aleph, Hay, Fav, Aleph, Hay. And they call that Kyrios or Theos in Greek. And then in the 13th century, it was changed to Lord, all capital letters, L-O-R-D. And that's a, many times in the 1611 King James Bible, you will find the name Lord, especially in the Old Testament, full capital letters. Why? Other times, especially in the New Testament, Lord, one capital letter, O-R-D. Why capital letters? Because of the name that was written in Hebrew, Yaffa, uh, uh, Yaffa, Yaffa, the Father, Yod, Aleph, Hay, Fav. Aleph, Yaffa, capital letters. Not once. 
in the restoration of the original sacred name Bible, will you find the name Yaffa or Yaffa Shua with small letters? It's always in capital letters. The name above every other name. Psalms 118.26 Blessed be he, that's Yaffa Shua, that cometh in the name of Yaffa, his father. Hallelujah. In the following scripture, the prophecy of King David is fulfilled. When the multitude follow him shouting, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of his father. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of his father. Is his father's name father? No. What does the word father mean? Can you tell me? It's a title like Mr. or Sir or Mrs. Your Honor. It's a title. Father. Let's read the scripture. Let's read the scripture. Matthew 21 9. Matthew 21 9. Now you must fasten your seatbelt. Verse 9. And the multitude that went before and that followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the Son of David. Who was he? Yafashua. He was walking, he was on his way to the temple to restore his earthly kingdom. And then what happened? What did the Jewish people did and the Hebrews and the Israelites? They cry and say, Hosanna, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of Yafa. His Father. Lord God. Huh. Yafa, His Father. Usana in the highest. Do you understand that? Carries on. Mark 11, 9. Mark 11, verse 9. And they that went before Him, and they that followed Christ, saying, Usana. Blessed is he that shall for sure, that cometh in the name of the Lord. L-O-R-D, capital. First he says, in the name of Yaffa. Now is the name of the Lord. Lord means Yaffa of Elohim. The above scripture confirms exactly what I just said. Matthew 21 verse 9, just look at these following scriptures. Luke 19 verse 38. Luke 19 verse 38. Saying, Blessed is the King that cometh in the name of Jaffa his Elohim. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who is the King? Who is the King? It must, it must be Jaffa Shua who has come in the name of his father Jaffa. The father and the son always had the very same name. The only problem was and is that the Roman Catholic Church throughout Asia created different Paleo-Hebrew, Paleo-Greek texts and Bible translations and reviews which obscured the original truth and changed it to a lie as we know it today. Huh. The church world else, they don't know the name. When we talk about the name, they think you're crazy. They think you're off of your mind. But so, to the disciples of Yahweh and the followers 2,000 years ago, that was not anything funny or out of the ordinary. As he grew up in and around the temple in Jerusalem, they knew him as Yaffa Shua since he was born. It wasn't the name that he received later on. John 12 verse 13. John 12 13. They took branches and palm trees. It's this Jews, these Israelites. And went forth to meet him. Who is it? Yaffa Shua. And cried, Usana. Blessed is the king of Israel. Who is the king of Israel? 
Yafashua that cometh in the name of Yafa is Elohim. Come on, come on. You want to tell me you can't see it? All of the Vas Christus confirm that when whatsoever we ask in the name of Yafashua, our Redeemer, the Father Yafa our Elohim, will honor his word and promise. He will honor his word and his promises. He has never changed. He has never changed. He's always the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. He's always the same. There's a chorus that we sang many years ago. Yesterday, today, and forever. Yafashua's the same. All may change, but Yafashua never. Glory to his name. Come on. Everything can change. And you can change his name. And that's why in a period of 1,500 years, 150 million uh, Yafist and Hebrew people and Jews were murdered because they stood upon the promise of the revelation name. And all documentation out to, uh, it needed to be eliminated. And also the people who believed in the name. The name above every other name. I want to I wanna invite you. As from now, when you pray, pray in the name of your Fashua and see how your prayers will change. Time has caught up with us till next week. If his father's will, Maranatha, Yafashua is coming back again. Hallelujah.